29, determine the standard cell potential and the cell potential under the stated conditions for the electrochemical reactions described here, and then state whether each is spontaneous or non-spontaneous under each set of conditions at 298.15 Kelvin. And then we have letter B. So in this case, they say the cell made from an anode half cell consisting of an aluminum electrode in 0.015 molar aluminum nitrate solution and a cathode half cell containing or consisting of a nickel electrode in a 0.25 molarity nickel 2 nitrate solution. Okie dokie. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to split this up into two different sections because we have to find the standard cell potential and the cell potential. So we're going to do all the math for like the standard side over here and the non-standard over here. Standard. Now, what is a cell potential? The value for it, or not the value, but the unit, the letter that they use, a cell potential is always a E cell. So we're searching for an E cell. But now in this case, since we're searching for a standard E cell, we're looking for a E notch cell. And standard cell potentials are great because we can go in the back of a book and find out the standard values for what they're talking about. And we can pull those numbers to get the standard cell potential. On the flip side, since we don't have the word standard here and they still want a cell potential, we're looking for a E cell that's not standard, no um, little notch thing at the top. So let's start with standard. Since we can go in the back of the textbook, that's exactly what I did here. I searched through what half reactions we're using here. Now, I had to look no further by telling us that we're talking about aluminum, and aluminum on the periodic table is Al. So I went and I got my aluminum half reaction with its corresponding E value. And then they told me that the cathode was the nickel one. So nickel is Ni on the periodic table. I went there to the back of the textbook, grabbed the nickel half reaction with its corresponding E value. Now, how are we going to use these? Well, the formula is this. E standard right? The standard cell potential, E cell, is just that standard cathode value minus the anode. And since they already told us that the anode was aluminum, the Al value goes over here, and the cathode value is the nickel, so the Ni goes over here. If you're using cathode minus anode, you do not have to flip any of the standard values that are in the back of a textbook. And it gets even better because you do not have to times these by two. If you're looking at a balanced equation and there's two, you know, of something, never do that. Just whatever those values are, that's what you're using. So the cathode is the nickel one. That's the negative 0.257. And I'm going to subtract that with the aluminum E value. So a negative 1.662. And all we have to do is just subtract these two. And we get negative 0.257 minus a negative 1.662. And those values look good. So we have a 1.405 volts is the unit. And that's your standard cell potential. Okay. Now let's just quickly answer the second part of the question. We need to just state whether each is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. And that just comes from knowing the sign. If you have a positive E cell value, that reaction is always going to be spontaneous. But if you have a negative E cell value, that is going to be non-spontaneous. So since we clearly have a positive value here, I know that this is going to be spontaneous. So let's just put that. Okay, so first part done. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to maybe kink this a little bit because with these, spoiler alert, there is a little bit more, uh, a little bit more work we have to do. So I might have to go into this section here. Okay, 
So now I have all the space available. Now let's talk about the non-standard cell potential. So I say to myself, okay, well, I have a E standard cell that I just found out, and I need to find, somehow I need to find the cell potential. They, they did give me a temperature here, right, 298.15. So I'm thinking of all of the, the formulas that I can use, and turns out that there is one, and it's this. There you go. As you can see, the formula already has a lot more stuff in it, so that's why we probably might need a little bit more work. So we're solving for that E not standard cell, and look, there's the standard one, which we just found out, 1.405. But now there's four different units here. We need to know an R, a T, an N, and an F. And then we have to find out a Q. Let's start with the R value. Now the R is a constant value. Now, since we're talking about volts, and that's somewhat a form of energy in joules, we have to use the R value that is used with energy, and that's 8.314. The temperature, they told us that we need to have it in Kelvin in this formula, and they told us that it was 298.15, so thank you for that. I'm going to go down to the F right now. I'm going to skip over the N for, for just a quick second because F, Faraday's constant, is another constant, and that's always 96,485. And the units here, if you wanted to know them, would be coulombs per mole. Doesn't really matter for, for this case, just know that this is the actual number. Now, let's talk about the N value. The N value in general, like if we use PV equals NRT, that N was just the number of moles of the gas. But since we're talking about electrons and redox reactions, this gets a little bit more specific because we need to find out the moles of electrons that are transferred. So I'm looking for a E value. How many electrons? Was there one electron transferred? Was there two? Was there three? Right? What, what's the number? Well, they didn't give me a balanced equation here, but we can kind of figure it out by looking at the half reactions. By making an equation work, you always add these two together. However, the number of electrons have to be the same. So, you know, fingers crossed that they do give you a equation in which they are already the same. But in this case, they're not. One is three and one is two electrons. So you say to yourself, how can I make these numbers be the same um, by multiplication? Yeah, I would, I would have to times this by uh, three and I would have to times this by two, right? Because then I would get six electrons and six electrons, and that is the lowest number of electrons that they will share. So in this case, N equals six. So we're almost there. We have R, T, N, and F, and now we have to find out the Q. Well, Q is basically going all the way back to your equilibrium chapter. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so in the equilibrium chapter, um, they talked about Qs and K values. And Q was always the concentration of the products divided by the reactants. But there's no equation here. So we basically have to quickly make one. But we did a little bit of the work here, right? Now just know that the every time that you have electrons that are on the left side of your half reaction, that's always the cathode. Technically, we always need one cathode and one anode. They told us that the nickel one is going to be the cathode, but the aluminum one, I have to turn this into an anode. How do you turn this into an anode? Yeah, you have to flip the equation. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to put the cathode equation up top, and I'm going to use that times three to get the correct number of electrons. So we have three Ni2 plus plus six electrons yields Ni. And just know that 
whenever they just say an, an element that's a solid and the charged one, that's aqueous because that's going to play a huge part in this equation. So I'll just say that this is aqueous. And now for the next one, I'm going to flip the equation and I'm going to times by two. So on this side, we will have aluminum. That's the solid. I have two of them and I have to put a three here. I heard you guys. I heard you. So this was two aluminum yields two Al3 plus. That's aqueous plus the six electrons. Now, when we are adding these together, because we need to get that final equation, those electrons, since they're on opposite sides, they'll cancel. But that's the end value. So this goes bye-bye. And we are rewriting the formula as, if I can, we have three Ni2 plus aqueous plus two aluminum solid yields three Ni solid plus two Al3 plus aqueous. And here is my balanced equation to finally get a Q expression, right? We did all of this to find out what that Q expression was. Concentration of the products divided by concentration of the reactants. Remember, solids do not get included, so I don't care about this solid and I don't care about this solid over here. It's just this aluminum aqueous divided by this nickel. So it would basically be the concentration of whatever the aluminum was raised to the second divided by the concentration of the nickel, because that's the, that's the reactant, always products divided by reactant, two plus raised to the third. We're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Now let's see, do I actually know the values of aluminum three plus and nickel two plus? Oh, that's why they gave me this, right? Aluminum nitrate, if I found out the formula, it would be AlNO33. But there's only one aluminum in one aluminum nitrate, so this value would be 0 0.015. Molarity. And now for the nickel, they told me that it was nickel 2 nitrate. If I did write out the formula for nickel 2 nitrate with crisscrossing and everything, it would be NiNO3 2. But still, there is only one nickel for every one nickel nitrate, so that's the number. So this is going to be 0 0.25 molarity. And now let's find out the Q value. So we have 0 0.015, that's squared, divided by 0 0.25 cubed. Now, what you can do is you can figure what this is, figure what this is, and just do the division. But that's why I love using the TI-84, because it makes it so easy to just plug this into the graphing calculator. So let's see if I do point. 0, 0.015, and I'm going to raise that to the second, and then I pull that out, and I say divided by, now if you want to securely make sure that everything on here is in the denominator, I'll just put a quick parentheses, but then I'll say 0.25, raise that to the third, pull that exponent out, you could close the parentheses, and just press enter. Look at that. 0 0.0144, and that's the Q value. So we've finally found out the Q value, 0 0.0144. So now pause the video if you need to, because I'm just going to erase all this Q information, because now we're just ready to plug in and solve for our E cell. So bye-bye. We did all that work just to get the E cell equal to, let's bring this down a little bit, 1.405 minus, I have the division sign, we have an ln value, 
I have the R, the T, the N, and the F. So R, just like we said before, was 8.314. The T was the 2, let me just pull this out a little bit, 298. 298.15, we found out that the N value was 6, and Faraday's constant is always 96,485, and we found out that the Q value was 0 0.0144. Okay, so now we got to do tackle this math. My suggestion is to just do this all in the calculator at once, just to make that into one number. So we'll say E cell equals 1.405 minus 8.314 times 298.15 divided by 6. And then since I'm not using parentheses and I want that Faraday's constant on the denominator, I have to press divide again. 96,485, just making sure that these numbers look good. Everything looks good to me. Let's press enter. And it's a pretty long decimal, 0.004. 28, 1, etc., etc. Do not round here because that's not the final answer. Now we can take this value that we found and just times it by the ln of 0 0.0144. So I'm going to pull that value from the top, the whole number, times it by the ln of 0 0.0144. Close the parentheses if you want to, press enter. And this whole thing, if I may, just get rid of this, whoop, just get rid of this, and now it turns into a negative value, 0 0.018157, much more decimals after that. Don't round because that is not the final answer. So now we're, we're ready to say now, I will clear this out, I will do 1.405 minus a negative. Or actually, what I will do is I will just say 1.405 minus, pull this whole number down. The negative's in there already. And there we go. And I will say 1.423 volts. And now, once again, is this... This spontaneous or non-spontaneous? It's still a positive value, so we are still spontaneous. And with this case, we are actually more spontaneous than the standard value. The standard was only 1.405. We went up a little bit, so it's even more spontaneous under these conditions. And that's it. Whew. What do you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Um... I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. Thank you for being part of this YouTube community. And thank you for spreading the word with your, your classmates, your friends. Because the more that we can help more people, the better understanding you guys have of all these subjects that we're covering. We got physics, math, uh, chemistry on the channel at the moment with much more subjects to come in the future. So hang tight and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.